When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everybody, to the first ever episode of The Coach's Corner. I'm glad you're here with us alongside my co-host, Matt Baldwin. I'm Tony Wally. Welcome to the show. So, The Coach's Corner. Why are we called The Coach's Corner? Matt, you want to tell them about why we're called The Coach's Corner? Yeah, well, it's it just seemed, uh, seemed fitting, right, uh, being that we're coaches for the Million Dollar Pro Success Academy. Um we wanted a way to to get more content to the people that were out there looking for more stuff to listen to, right? Um, and more stuff for for people that are already in the Success Academy or people that are already trying to to scale their business, right? Um, this is a way for us to uh, to answer those common questions about mindset, hiring guys, firing guys. Um, how, how am I leveling up? How am I getting to that next level? Um, and and how do I continue to do that? Right. In between modules, in between meetings with my coach, in between, you know, potty talk episodes, what am I listening to? That's going to continually drive me to keep pushing forward. That's why we created this. Yeah. Um, so Real quick, how did you find uh, the MDP Success Academy? Well, the short answer is YouTube. I had, every time I had a question about anything, I would YouTube it, whether it be how to hire an employee, how to fire an employee, how to, how to, (laughs) anything, anything. Um, I'm just thinking that one, that one apprentice that you got. That that's like you're like, hey, you know how to you know how to change a diaphragm on a flushometer, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I got it. You know damn well they're YouTube in that. Yeah. They're sitting on the toilet backwards. YouTube. Ah, what did I do wrong? Yeah, no, like like that was like you with trying to run a business. Yeah, and well, <laughs> by by the time I was YouTubing these questions, Richard and Laura had a bunch of content out, and um, so every time I would type something in, they would pop up. So I started watching them. Um, But what led me to look for them is that, you know, I was in business for 14 years before I really saw serious growth. And I mean, like explosive growth. Um, I started off in the new construction area and that's what I'm used to. That's what I, that's what I learned how to plumb that that was my arena and so when i went into business and i didn't even go into business for the money i just went into business because i felt like i was meant to to lead something i felt like i could do it um my own way and and i i, I knew that i could do it in a good way and i worked for a great company i had a great boss he was my mentor <clears throat> and so i didn't leave because i was bitter about anything. I just wanted to to have my own thing. And I didn't know what all came along with that. I, I learned quick, but um, I just wanted to be on my own. And um, so I went into business and I started plumbing houses. And the first year was great because I was used to making, you know, an, an hourly amount. And I went into business when the, the housing market was hot. We were making a ton of money or, you know, I was making what I thought was a ton of money because I was one show and our one truck show and the the demand for new construction plumbing was, you know, high. But the next year, the housing market crash was 2008, 2009. Um, and I just I didn't know what to do if the money wasn't coming in. And I, and I had, you know, a, a bank account that was bigger than than it was the week before I that was the first time that I ever started panicking, you know? Um, So that was early on and we did service work. We, we got into service work and got away from 
the um, the new construction, and even even then I struggled. Like I had no systems in place. I had no uh, systems for pricing, systems for employees to follow, systems for anything. I was just I mean, for years and years I was just you know trying to run the business out of the cab of my truck. You know I never looked at invoices. I always paid my invoices like on the thirty day you know, 30 day, um, deadline. I, I never even looked at them. I just, Hey, what do I owe? Okay. Pay it. Didn't know how to read a profit and loss statement. And, you know, I just rocked along. You can, you can work in the wrong direction for a long time and, and nobody's coming to help you. You know, you're, you're on your own. The competition surely isn't going to help you. But, um, and so we went into service work and, um, you know, even, even that, you you become available to to everybody all the time and um it really takes its toll on your personal life uh, my wife and i had you know we already we had two kids um and it was just demanding a lot of my time and i didn't know how to to stop that i didn't see any any end in sight to the to the demanding of my time and and that's what really led me to to start looking for a better way to do things. And I I was I found Richard and Laura. I can't remember what I looked up, but I I uh I started listening to how, the how to run a plumbing business for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was probably something like how to handle a, a an employee situation. Like you know that early on when you don't really know how to confront an employee and it 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 used to be like sleepless nights if you had to fire somebody or you had to have a hard conversation. I mean, those, those really caused a lot of anxiety with me, but so the one episode that really stood out and really got me to, to, to join the success academies when, when Laura said, um, you don't have to be available to everybody all the time. Let another plumbing company do that. And I, I mean, that, that's, that's what like hit me right in the chest. I was like, man, that's the whole crux of, of what's going on. Like I'm available to everybody all the time. We're running 24 hours a day. We got a call rotation. All my guys are worn out. I'm wore out. We don't have any kind of family life, you know, cause we're available all the time. So yeah. And then I joined the Success Academy and I learned how to systemize things, you know, getting my pricing right all the way, all the way through. Pricing is just one thing, but, you know, systemizing every aspect of your business, that's, that's what, that's what it looked like before. And then when I started systemizing everything, my life became, started becoming a little bit more freed up. And then it just continued as we as we rocked along with the modules. What about you? I, I found Richard and Laura by accident. Um, I had I, I had been trying to uh, scale my business unsuccessfully uh, for about two years. Um, hired some guys, fired some guys, hired some more guys, fired some more guys, um, and then. The last go around, I hired two guys at the same time. I was like, one of them's got to work out, right? Um, and I, I mean, I had no systems. We were doing like trying to track where they were going with T sheets. I had shared Google. I had shared a uh, iPhone notes with all of them with like their schedule on it slash their time sheets, and then they had to move it to T sheets. And it was just like it was a mess. I mean, it was an absolute mess. We had you know. At first, we had no CRM whatsoever. Um, yeah, I just, I was trying my best, but it, it just wasn't working. Um, and I didn't realize that it wasn't working, which is the crazy thing, which is why I say that I, I found them by accident. I had this other podcast I like to listen to that talked all about, you know, plumbing tools and all all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, vans and van wraps and plumbing tools and... um. And I was all caught up on the episodes. They only they did one episode a week, and I was all caught up on them. So I just typed into my Apple Podcast app. I just typed in plumbing, 
or plumber yeah. or some something along that line and up came richard i was like what is the million dollar plumber what is this this what's this cheesy salesman trying to what's sell he, what's he doing what's he doing <laughs> <laughs> what's this guy doing um so i started listening and you know at that point there was you know whatever 300 back episodes right so there's plenty of content so i don't remember what the first one i listened to was but i just quickly started listening to all of them um and then the the one that sold me was they did like a master's edition with the women um mm-hmm. and there there were four different wives on of plumbing power couples um and i don't know why it just it just hit me like out of nowhere there was there's this uh this woman named Lindsay on and she was talking about how she was a teacher and she quit her job to go work with her husband um and uh the soccer coach yeah she yeah she was a soccer coach or a softball coach and she was or maybe it was a softball she was a teacher i don't remember what it was it was uh it was uh dw's wife inception Uh, yeah um but uh you know she talked about how she she left that career and blah 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 blah, and that's really what caused the business to explode to get those systems in right to do those excel sheets to like everything that i suck at as a plumbing technician, right? Yeah. Um, and I was like, that's that's what I'm missing. So I went home that day and I was like, Ashley, I'm going to sign up for coaching uh, for the business. You're going to quit your job and everything's going to be great. <laughs> what an she epiphany. Like, she was like, she's she like, was like what, what a great idea. What are you smoking? Like that, <laughs> what are you talking about? I've been asking you to come work for you for four and a half years and you keep saying no, 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 no. Um I don't know. It, it hit me like a ton of bricks and I went home and I literally went home that day and I was like, you're quitting your job and you're going to come work for me and we're going to, we're going to be millionaires. And she really, I mean, she didn't believe for like, I mean, she quit her job because she believed in me and she came to work with us, but like, well, that was with me. but she didn't really believe. I don't think she really believed it for like probably like six months. Like, okay, maybe he knew a little bit what he was talking about, but I was still right about this, this, and this. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, that just comes down to the old thing that, you know, in our conversations, in Richard's podcast, in talking with our clients, um, you know, it's, you know, we thought just because we were good plumbers that that would translate into being a good business owner, right? Like yeah. if I'm a good plumber, that must mean that I'm going to be a good plumbing business owner. Um both of us found out the hard way, really. Like that's that's not the case here, man. Like <laughs> the real hard way. The real yeah, like just because you know how to turn wrenches doesn't mean that you know what a PL is or a balance sheet or any of those things. Um yeah. so you want to tell us a little bit about you know your experience of you know what it was like when, when you came to that realization, like, you know, man, I'm 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 not the business owner I thought I would be just because I know a lot about plumbing. Yeah, well, a foreshadowing of that happened when I was, I thought I was doing great. And I was in a a house, a new construction job site. And uh, it was me and uh, my helper. And there was a, an old electrician that I got to know over the years very well. But this was the first day that I met him. And, you know, you get on those job <clears throat> sites and you start talking to, to some of the other trades and <clears throat> you get kind of a rapport with them and a back and forth. And so he was like, well, how long have you been in business? And I was like, man about three months or something like that. And he's like, Oh man, that's awesome. That's, that's man. Congratulations. He said, you haven't even been blindsided by anything yet. Uh, and he was laughing, you know, this guy's <laughs> 60 years old. And I was like, I mean, no, not really. Not, not yet. And he, and he said, Oh, okay, you will. And then it, we just kind of, we just kind of went on, you know, talking about something else. I didn't really know how right he was. And I didn't, I didn't have the forethought to, take any kind of action on that. But, you know, later on, um, I did get blindsided. I got blindsided by a lot of things. And they are things that if if I just had somebody to kind of coach me and guide me, I could have avoided them, you know? And this whole this whole concept of I'm a good plumber and I can I can make a better way, um, it's it couldn't be further from the truth. And we kind of say that we, we say exactly that in the intro, but 
just because you're a good plumber, that that makes absolutely zero difference when it comes to being a business owner. Um, you know, you have to be disciplined in 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 all areas, uh, and the least of which plumbing, because what really should happen as a business owner is you should be getting out of the truck and getting away from those tools in order to save your business because you can't you can't work all day. I mean, you can, but it's not very conducive to success when you work in a truck all day and then you come home and try to try to wear the business owner hat after you've been doing the manual labor all day. Everything starts falling through the cracks. I remember I would get up at like 4.30 in the morning and I would make a material list for the day and then I would go to the supply house, get the stuff and whatever it was for the day, a rough in, top out or trim out. And then I would come home and I'd do invoices, paper invoices. Um, we didn't have a CRM either. Um, and then mail them off and then do it all over again the next day. And it just became such a such a grind. And and there was no <clears throat> there was no off button. I couldn't I couldn't turn anything off. And I remember when our when our daughter was born, um when she came home from the her and Allison, my daughter and, and Allison came home from the hospital in the back of my mind the whole time. I was like, well, I mean, I really, I really got to get back to work, you know? And I thinking back, mm -hmm. I felt like, I felt like the world was going to end and and that wasn't fair to them, you know, my family. And it really wasn't fair to me myself, you know? And I just didn't know um, that you really don't have to be available to everybody all the time. And I just didn't know how to go about doing that. You can really become entrenched in this in this philosophy that if if I'm not around, everything has to stop because I'm the one with all the answers. I'm the one with all the, the formulas in my head. I'm the one that knows how to fix everything. And that mentality is what's going to have you sitting at the supply house talking about not being able to find good help when you're 60, 65 years old, when you really should be enjoying life, you know? Yeah. And to really bring that full circle, what you said about, you know, when uh, Allison and Ella came home from the hospital, um, yeah, it was the same way for me, you know, with, with all the kids, it was, you know, maybe, you know, I think, I think the last two, it was like, we planned to have the baby on like a Thursday. So I only had to take Friday off. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my little cousin could run emergency calls if he had to type of thing. And it was like, so, you know, at, at most I was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I was back to work on Monday. Um, and, you know, like you said, that's just, that's not fair. That's not fair to your daughter. That's not fair to your wife. It's not fair to you. Um, and it's not fair of your customers to demand that kind of attention from you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's funny. It, it's funny you bring that up because it's, you know, my manager just had his first baby um, last week, last Wednesday or Thursday. I forget which day it was. Um, but the beauty of building this business, right, and being able to scale a business and having it be that it doesn't rely on one single person mm -hmm. is, you know, I know him. I know his, his, his mindset, right? And it's somewhere in between my mindset and your mindset and a technician's mindset. Um, so I, I know that if I didn't do something, he'd be at back at work a day or two later mm -hmm. uh, because it's just something that he felt like he had to do. Right. Yeah. Um, so I just straight up told him like, you ain't allowed to come to work for at least a week. And that's awesome. Um, and th that's the beauty of having the systems in place where, you know, we can plug people in, unplug people plug a different person in um and it doesn't all rest on one person's shoulders so that i have that flexibility and you know that's that's life-changing stuff spending those first seven eight nine you know ten whatever days with a newborn your first your first kid um and being able to do that, that that's like a life-changing experience that most people in the blue collar trades don't get to experience 
right. because they're worried about the paycheck. They're worried about the overtime. They're worried about having to get back to work and not disappointing their boss or their foreman or whatever it is. And that doesn't matter if you're a plumber, you're an electrician, you're an HVAC guy. Most guys don't have the flexibility to be able to take and and he was off seven days prior to that. So they don't really, he was at work for, he took off seven days, he was at work for two days, and then he got 10 more days off. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's awesome. damn near a month, that. right? Like, yeah. and and most guys don't have the flexibility to do that. So not only does it change our lives as business owners, right? Because we get the flexibility, we get to spend time with our family. Um, we get we get to live the lifestyle that a CEO should be living. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we get also get the opportunity to change the lives of, of the people that work for us and really give them, uh, you know, a more quality lifestyle. Um, you know, starting with, you don't have to be available to everybody at all times. Hey, how about we just don't do nights and weekends? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But we don't do nights and weekends on on call. Right. Um, and you know, that's just a small microcosm of the things that we're able to do with for our guys. And then, I mean, you could run down the list of systems and it's really, the whole business is built to improve everybody's life that works in the business and then to improve the service that you bring to your customer, right? Yeah, and if you look at your company as a whole, you don't, if somebody's looking in from the outside, you don't want to see the boss is the only one that's successful. The boss is riding around in a brand new vehicle. Nobody else can afford to to take the day off because they're worried about what they're going to make or what they're not going to make because they don't have vacation or they don't have sick days. It can really become, and and this industry can really make you feel like a, like you're just a tool in the toolbox, you know, Mm -hmm. use you up. And as soon as you don't work anymore, you you get thrown away. And and that's the last thing I want for my, my, my team of people, because my company wouldn't be what it is now without the team of people in place and the system that's in place everybody knows their role everybody knows how to do it and if somebody else needs to step in and <clears throat> help out they can do that um and and everybody's just happy you know from from start to finish they know why they're doing what they're doing and they have uh an incentive for doing it you know hey plumbing pro you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. They don't hide away at the end of the afternoon hoping they're not going to get another job. They're yeah. ready for another job because man, yeah. they got a reason why they, they got goals too. And um, you don't, you're not the only one that has a goal when you run your company, the way we've learned to run it with the million dollar success, the million dollar pro success Academy. It's just, it becomes fun to go to work again because you see everybody has an opportunity to, to thrive. And thrive is a good word. And we, we, we've said that a lot in our conversations. And there's a big difference between just being in business because you might just barely be in business. I would, I would venture to say that a lot of people that are in business and they're, and they're in, this, in this niche of people that we're talking about, that they, they're just starting out, they're in one truck, maybe they got two or three trucks, but they're still in a situation where they really don't know like, did I make a profit or not? Because you really probably don't have time to pay as you go. That's, a, that's a, you know, something we do now that we didn't do before. Um, can you look at your profit and loss statement at a glance and say, yeah, this is, uh, we're, we're okay. This, this percentage here is fine. This is where it's supposed to be. Uh, and these are not things that I would bring up had I not gone through the Success Academy and and, and been taught these things. So, when I finally accepted the fact that I needed guidance from somebody, I mean, uh, business coaching is not something that the average plumber ever thinks of. Am I right? Like, yeah, definitely not. It's usually a white collar type thing, but um, 
when I accepted the fact that I needed to listen and stop saying, can't find good help, or that only happens um, because you live in a certain area. I live in a, an area where we couldn't do that. We can't charge that. I didn't even know what to charge. I didn't even know what it was costing my business to operate per hour. I never even thought about it. Like your business costs a certain amount to run every hour, regardless of whether you're doing work or whether you're sitting at home or not. And when you're enlightened to those type of things, you start making CEO type decisions and it incentivizes you to get out of the truck because there's no time to be under the sink for Ms. Jones. You have to have somebody qualified to do that. So you can worry about advancing the business. Um, so when I accepted that and when I accepted the fact that I was going to listen, even if it didn't make sense to me, even if it was counterintuitive, I realized that I had gotten myself to a certain point in life. And I should say that we weren't going out of business. We were we were fairly successful, but <clears throat> there was no way out of the of the chaos. I had to be in it in order to, you know, for it to to for it to thrive. I was stressed out. My general manager was stressed out. It was just, you know, we had no real direction, but we were, but because we've come from a background of just work yourself out of it, you know, just work yourself out of it. We were able to keep going. And then, but once I got the knowledge and, and somebody was showing me what to do next, I was all in. I mean, I was hungry and I was like, I got to, I got to find a reason I've got to find a way that I can spend more time doing what I want to do because what's the purpose if if I make them if I make a million dollars I'm not gonna have time to spend it I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be digging a ditch somewhere you know, so it doesn't you matter digging, it, you could be digging your own grave yeah that's what you're doing yep if if it's a thousand dollars or a million you don't have time to spend it anyway or or if you're on vacation how many times have you been in a restaurant and seen somebody they're supposed to be on a date with their wife or their, their, their whole family's around and they're sitting there on the phone like this. Mm -hmm. It's because they can't get away. They don't, I don't, I mean, I hate to speak for those people, but I feel like when people saw me, well, let's not, well, let's not speak for those people. Let's, let's speak for Tony Wally, right? Yeah. Well, that's what Wally, I, Wally plumbing company four years ago, you're on vacation at Disney, of course. Um, you know, you're getting calls from rusty or getting calls from one of the guys. Right. And what are you doing? You answering those phone calls? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, four years ago, I was, and and I actually got a call from the supply house four years, uh, a few years, maybe maybe a little more than four years ago. But they were looking for their money. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so so that's a whole other thing. Like, I, well, I just spent that at Space Two Twenty, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to come down to Orlando to get me. No, I, I just there, there there was you know. I didn't pay as I go back then and I didn't. So therefore I didn't know what, if it was, I, I was making a profit or not. I felt like I was making a profit. So man, we're gone. And then I find out that I got more month at the end of the money, as they say, you know what I mean? <laughs> Good man. Yeah. I've been there. So, been there. but, but once I went through, you know, I, I got help and I became very involved in the success Academy. I was at all the live coaching with Richard and Laura um, and it's, it's immediate. Like the change is immediate. You can see a difference immediately because just, just as an example, you stop doing free estimates immediately. And then you start tracking, Hey, what, what are we making? What are we saving? Um, when we do a diagnostic fee, even if they don't want us to do the job, that's just one thing that's immediate. And then you keep track of all that and just on and on and on. But from there, all the way through the 12th module of the Freedom Lifestyle, for where Allison and I are just going uh, to meet you guys in Raleigh, North Carolina, to just hang out, enjoy each other's company and not fret about, is this going to, is this going to break the bank? Me flying up here first class to, to hang out with some other business owners. Is it going to break the bank? No, it's not going to break the bank. What, yeah, what, what, I mean it's beautiful. It like? It's beautiful to have that freedom. I mean, just last weekend I was just just about this close to hopping on a plane and coming down to Mardi Gras, right? Um, so that freedom is nice. For me, it's you know, it it's great, it's great to have the freedom, it's great to be able to spend as much time with my wife and my kids as I want. Um, but uh 
you know what what's what's really cool to me is the opportunity to do this right whether it's, it's the podcast or coaching one of our private clients or doing the group coaching um all of that is an opportunity to reach out to matt baldwin or tony wally of three years ago right and yeah and help them grasp these simple concepts, right? That are so hard to wrap your head around because they're counterintuitive to absolutely everything we've ever thought, yeah. right? Um, but to to help them kind of grasp these concepts and watch them implement it in their business and then watch their business start to thrive, right? Okay. It was super cool when we did it in our business, but it was like, at some point you get so ingrained in working, like first you're ingrained in working in the business, then you become ingrained in working on the business that I feel like at some point you kind of just look up and you're like, how the hell did we get here? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, you're not seeing the little wins where, you know, with my, my private clients and with the group coaching guys, I can, I can see those wins and track them as a, you know, you see a guy go from, he's got his butt in a truck and then he hires two guys. Right. And then, and then now he's out of the truck and he's in the office. Right. And maybe he's bickering with his wife a little more, but that's all sort of the process of working with your wife. Um, and then, uh, you know, she quits her job and she comes to work full time. And then all of a sudden, you, before you know it, they got four or five trucks. They're living a life they never thought that they could live. Right. Like, I I, I know that from experience because I'm living a life that I never thought I could live. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's been times, whether it's, you know, we talk about this a lot and we'll get into this more on further episodes. But, you know, whether there's a slow time going on at work. Um, and you just, you need to be the bad guy for a few days and you just don't show up, let your manager kind of be their friend and tell them everything's going to be okay. Um, and, and let them bash you. And, and that, that's fine. That's part of being the owner, right? That's part of taking the risk is these guys aren't going to be happy with you all the time. Right. 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 Um, but, uh, but they feel secure. Yeah. You know, they feel secure uh, and it, they feel secure, even though the boss hasn't showed up for three days or four days or he's on vacation for a week, right? Like they, they know that there's a structure. They know that they got somebody that's going to give them orders. Um, and you know, it, it's real cool to, to have that whole thing. You know, I, I still get amazed by it. Sometimes it's like, it, it, we, we have this structure in place and just to watch, especially when we're on vacation, that, that's when it really gets us. And it's like, Ashley looks to me somewhere around like five, six o'clock. She's like, we make any money today? I'm like, oh, did we make any money today? Let's go have margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and conversely, like you talk about not being at the shop to uh, when it's slow and you have, you have a general manager that's there to have structure in place that regardless of whether there's one job on the board or a hundred jobs, everything remains the same. There's a system in place if you're the boss and you come in and you're freaking out and you're, you're of the mentality that somebody can just be sweeping the floor. If there's nothing else to do, you got to work all the time. That that's another thing that, that, that you learn to get over in this, in this success Academy, that, that these guys are grown men that, that are professionals at what they do. And when it's busy, they make you and the company and themselves a good living why would you go in there and start harping on them when, when, it, when they don't have any work to do? Mm -hmm. um, and just those kinds of things right there are the things that we're going to talk about in this podcast. And they're not going to have anything to do with plumbing or electrical or HVAC. All of that has to do with mindset for one and systems and a, just a mentality of a business owner, as opposed to a tradesman. And I'm just so glad that we're doing this podcast because I think things would have been a whole lot different if I would have had something to listen to when I was in the, in the throes of realizing that I had no idea what I was doing in business. So I'm really glad that we're getting this thing kicked off and I'm, I'm super glad to have this first episode going. Yeah, me too. Um, can't wait for it to drop can't wait for people to start listening. Um, you know, and, and like I said, you know, not for us, but the more people this reaches, the more content we could put out there, the more people can realize that there is a way out of that hamster wheel 
of running a trades business, right? Yeah. And like you said, whether it's HVAC, electrical, plumbing, roofing, I don't care if you're a handyman, man. Like there, there is, there is that inevitable hamster wheel of, uh, of handyman need love. Do, yeah. <laughs> that, that hamster wheel of do the job, get paid, do the job, get paid, do the job, get paid. Oh crap. I forgot about this bill. Yeah. All the money's gone. Now I got to go do the next job to get paid and do the next job to get paid. And it, it's just a, not that you can't make a living because you can, we were making a living, but there was no, like you said, there was no path to. You're not making a life. Work, work. Yeah. You're not making a life. There's no path to working a six, seven, eight hour day. No, not at all. And making it to your daughter's chorus concert, right? Yeah. Or making it to your son's baseball tournament. Or, you know, going out on a, on a date with your wife or going away for a weekend with your wife. What, whatever it is, whatever yeah. it is, there is a way out. You just have to be, be mindful that other people have been there and you can be taught if you're willing to listen. And yep. I learn something new every day. I learn something new from you. I learn something new from the guys that I hang out with in this Success Academy. And it's just a whole different mindset and it, your mindset just has to change. So I, if you're a, if you're a plumbing business owner and you're, and you're just starting out and whether you have, it's, you're still in the truck and, and, and you're listening to us going to a job or whatever it is. Um, I hope that you'll continue to listen to this podcast and I hope you'll like it and subscribe to it. And we're going to be talking about something different. The subject matter is, is going to be something that you can benefit from this is what we would tell you if we were two or three years ago. If it was, we're talking to ourselves two or three years ago when we didn't think that there was any way out of the rat race and the hamster wheel of just being a one truck business owner. But but there really is. So that's that's all I've got for this episode. For this episode, this <laughs> this inaugural episode of the Coach's Corner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hope everyone tunes in next time. You know, like you said, we got systems for everything, man. We got systems for, you know, we don't teach you how to tie your shoes, but we'll teach your guys how to tie their shoes, right? Um, I mean, we pretty much, we have a system for absolutely everything it takes to take your business from one, two, three trucks all the way up to a multi-truck, multi-million dollar operation, right? Like that's what we've done. That's what I've done, right? Yeah. In the last two years, I've taken my truck, my business from two trucks all the way up to eight trucks um, and multi, multi million dollars. Um, so it's yeah, possible, especially if someone like I can do it, you know, like so if someone like me could do it, it's possible. Yeah. If I can do it, you guys can do it. And, and my company's the same way. I have a multi truck, multi million dollar business and, and, and a happy team and everybody's motivated and that just that didn't just happen. We were all, we all worked together and we all followed a system and we did it even though it was counterintuitive and and we're looking forward to sharing more of that with you. So let's get out of here. All right. All right, see you guys next time. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.